Painting is one of those DIY jobs that most people think that they can have a bit of a crack at. But as we all well know, it's not always as easy as it seems, especially when it comes to choosing colour. So what do you need to know when painting a room? Well, colour choice is a good place to start. It's so easy to be confused. For me though, I always have what I call a jumping off point. That is something in the room that kind of guides me in the right direction. Things like carpet and tiles, they really do dictate your colour scheme. I know I want blue on the wall, so that narrows it down. Which blue though, I'm still a bit confused. So instead of launching into a four litre can of paint, one of these really, really takes the pressure off. Now instead of just buying one of these sample pots, I also advise that you go for one slightly darker and one slightly lighter. That way you've got a choice of three and you'll be really sure. What you have to do is get a piece of cardboard. There's about a metre of paint in there, one square metre. So paint it out on the cardboard. Do two coats, then you'll get the true colour. By having a piece of cardboard that's already painted, you can move it around the room. You can look at it under different lights throughout the day. That way you'll truly see the colour to make that decision. The colour I'm going for is called Precision. I'm pretty lucky with this room. These walls are new. It's all fresh plasterboard. They've been primed. All they need is a very light sand. If you're going over existing paintwork, I would suggest you make sure your walls are nice and clean. Sugar soap is the best thing for the job. Just dilute it down as per the directions and give the walls a once over, especially in kitchens, bathrooms and laundries. Now as far as primer goes, I'm lucky again because my window sills have already been primed. But if you're going over raw timber, make sure you use the suitable prep coat required. Once that's dry, you'll be ready to start filling any holes. Spat filler is great for small nail holes and picture hook holes got anything deeper, like those cracks around your skirting boards and architraves, that's when you use no more gaps. When it's dry, sand it off and you'll be ready to paint. The final step of prep and that is masking. If you've got the tricky situation where your carpet runs right up to your skirting boards and you want to paint those, if you use one of these, a little spatula, you can actually tuck the tape in under the board. Masking just really does make that difference between amateur and professional. The next job is cutting in. That's painting these edge pieces and in the corners before I start rolling. The best advice that I can offer is to choose the brush that suits your hand. Now with the roller sleeves, you've got a lot of choice out there. Buy the best quality you can afford. For your skirting boards and trims, make sure you choose the right formulation of paint. Generally, we use an aqua enamel in a semi-gloss finish. It really will stand up to wear and tear. You know, it never ceases to amaze me the power of paint and the massive effect it can have on a room. Our blue is dark, but I knew what I was getting. But just know the look you're after, do the prep, do your homework, then you'll get the results that you want. I wonder what score they'd give me for this on House Rules.